Welcome back, everybody, to the LCS Challengers League Promotion Tournament presented to you by Subway. My name is Grapes, joined alongside Covey, and we just wrapped up our first series of the evening. Mirage Alliance ended up getting eliminated after a very, very hard-fought series and Blue Water coming out on top. Five teams are left. Uh, Lit are the one Challengers team that is trying to, you know, keep the right. But unfortunately, Mirage Alliance, they were taking the school. Now it's time for both of us to get taken the school here by Winthrop and Ole Miss. They might be the bottom two seeds we have in this tournament, but both very strong collegiate programs with, uh, I'd say, very fun stories to try and make it and really find, meet Maryville in Challengers League as they have been the one school that promoted into the league and have proven that you can play at the top of your game in Challengers League on top of going to school. Am I, oh my, am I excited for this matchup yet again? If you are not, if you were not following the qualifiers throughout the entire split, very fair, first of all, because there's a lot of League of Legends that you're going to have to watch throughout the, the season as a whole. But Ole Miss and Winthrop have played against each other a number of times. They matched up against each other in the semifinals of the first qualifier, where Winthrop ended up coming away with a 2-1 win. And they also played in the Swiss format of, of qualifier number two, Winthrop also winning that one. So, so far, they hold the advantage, but Ole Miss advanced further in that second qualifier tournament. They are your defending finalists, and they lost only to CCG. Yeah, and honestly, it was a heck of a run for Ole Miss. And I know, I think one of the big parts of that run, Shogo is the main character of this team. But Uncle Sam, how he's been able to improve his play to really play around Shogo has been big. I think Stray has actually been a very solid top winner in this as well. And curious to see... Really, what it's like for Winthrop to play this series, because when you play up against Ole Miss, they are going to draft for Shogo. He is going to get the resources on his team. He's going to be played for. And Winthrop, whenever you go up against Ole Miss, it's just a different puzzle to solve because they're a team that plays so heavily around bot lane. As we get right into this draft, the bottom lane is going to be where we have to focus for this entire series. Not only is Shogo, like, the biggest carry of all carry players here for Ole Miss. A lot of resources go down towards him and Rhino. Mobility is another player that I think has received a lot of attention this qualifier split and deservedly so. He's played super well throughout the entirety of spring and he has really taken a big step cubby since the last time you might've seen him play back on Evil Genius's Challengers in 2023 spring. Uh, I've been keeping track. I got to cast him at Harrisburg, which is a lot of fun. True. Winthrop actually won that tournament. I think the wild part about Winthrop for me is that in fall, they were winning every collegiate tournament. And if I, you had to ask me about the favorites to promote in the NACL at the start of spring, I said Winthrop. I, I thought this team was very Same sound. Here. They played well as five. I think that at times the individuals don't get enough credit because some people look at this team, look at their coach being XEG and Artemis, just be like, oh yeah, you know, they have great coaching. They play well as a team. But man, some of these players I think are really impressive. Denethor for me has been one of the better players in this tournament so far. Someone that I really want to see in Challengers League. It would be cool to see a second college be promoted as a squad. Uh, and I think if they're going to do it, it has to be off the back of Mobility and Chucky stepping up to play against uh, Shogo and Rhino. And also Denethor just being the beast that he has been against another good top laner in Stray. Yeah, I, I know talking to Mobility specifically and a lot of the other players on Winthrop, like, they really think that they could do what Maryville did in the NACL this split, which was very good, as we know. They made it all yeah, the way to far. the land finals. Um, They're just one series away from hoisting that trophy um, in its entirety. And so this is going to be that first step. Both them and Ole Miss are playing for their tournament lives at this point. The loser of this best of three will be knocked out and we'll have to wait until summer for another chance to promote. We've gotten through this first phase of picks. Azir picking up for Uncle Sam is very big. This is something that he actually learned throughout the course of this split and really has looked good on, especially towards the later half of Qualifier 2. Yeah, he, he was on his APA arc, you know, uh, trying to pick this <laughs> champ up. Yeah, literally. Uh, I, I do want to say, you know, getting into the draft, we haven't talked about this a lot, uh, but... It's a very sound core so far for Winthrop with this Jinx comp. We're going to be trying to play for resets, Zin and Nautilus to hold the line. I want to see a Braum ban coming out. I think Varus Braum is a rather strong combo. Usually Rhino playing more of the playmakers. That's why we see a ban like the Rel coming in. But Braum is something where Zin and Nautilus, they do have to jump in. And you have a lot of ways to proc Winner's Bite with Wukong Varus' here. So with all this, is taken away as well from Winthrop. I know that's a bottom lane that Ole Miss is very comfortable playing if yeah, they love it the is Braum. made available to them. So if... Winthrop, do not ban it away right now. I would not be surprised to see that uh, Braum picked Ooh. up here on R4. And with the okay. Alistar takeaway, it seems like Ole Miss has the opportunity as Winthrop is more scared of the hard engage. I, I will say Alistar does bring the bouncy house with uh, Wukong and potentially Azir, but those were three supports taken away. They took away the two that could really encourage the Wombo. Braum's going to bring a lot of, a stronger of a skirmish. And for me, a stronger 2v2 with Varus Braum. This makes it very tricky for Nautilus to actually 
go jump into this comp. So I, I like this pick from Ole Miss. They have counter pick as well for top lane coming in. And this is where Denethor's pool, it's been untouched so far. And I'm curious what frontliner he decides to go with. For me with Ole Miss, or like what I see so far is I think this is a comp that for me has pretty good scaling. So I'd like the Renekton here for Denethor because I think it's one where you can really use this pick to try and attack and make sure that around one, two items, you are being that beast that holds the front line. Oh, oh and we see okay. an Aesol locked in as Never well. Mind. No more scaling talk. Yeah. Went through about talking about scaling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Went through about scaling. Um, I, I really like Aesol here because it's going to be really tough for Varus plus a zero to auto. So... As this game goes on, Aesol gets more and more range, and you get that Rywise Crystal Scepter that makes it so difficult to get to this Jinx. And I think that Ole Miss, you're going to have to find ways to break this game through bottom lane. Because Gragas, for me, is a pick where you're just going to neutralize Renekton, but Renekton still gets Thieves and is a beast for the first two items. Wukong doesn't really have priority against the Zen. It's going to be on Uncle Sam stepping up on that Azir to try and open up a couple windows against this Aesol to actually go impact this bot lane, get the Jinx behind, and that's why I think Ole Miss has to play out this game. First 20 minutes is going to be very, very important. If you are all Miss, you have some bad memories of Aurelian Soul on your mind. You lo They lost to it twice, specifically to Bradley, yeah. who played it in the mid lane for CCG once in the group stage and once in the game three of the grand finals. And, yeah, you know, Sword, I don't think he's actually played it this split, but this is a very strong pick every time we've seen I, it in tier three. I've been very vocal that this champ's busted uh, to the fact where now that it's over, I was talking with, to both FlyQuest and Maryville being like, you know, if you get to game five in Fearless Draft and Aesol is up, it can be really OP. Like, I feel like you have to have drafts prepped where you're willing to play this. We've seen this actually be an answer uh, from Showmaker into Azir, because eventually you do outrange him. So we'll have to see what kind of impact this pick has uh, on this game. Well, here we go. Two collegiate teams, two very good collegiate teams. I think everyone would consider Ole Miss and Winthrop to be in that top five if not like just top two or three yeah. in, in strength in, in collegiate programs. And seeing them both at this stage, you know, looking to get that opportunity to play in tier two, very, very cool. Very, very impressive for both of these programs. And I honestly don't know who's going to be favored. I, you know, Winthrop has taken the games off of Ole Miss both times that they've played, but Miss has looked better and better as the split has gone on. It's something where I think if we're going to talk about stories too, we have to talk about Shogo's story with Ole Miss. So Shogo is someone that is technically an import. And yeah. with the NACL kind of narrowing and less teams being, being willing to afford visas or, you know, plus LCS orgs being willing to field those, this is one of the w only ways that Shogo can actually get into the league. And I've been in tryouts where I'm a coach with Shogo in the league. I've talked to so many coaches that speak so highly about how well Shogo interviews and plays, but it was always like, you know, he's not the best at his role. Therefore, we don't think that we can use an import slot on him. But it was never like Shogo's not good enough. He's always been good enough. And if he was able to get through with Ole Miss being the sixth seed, I feel like that would just add to the main character energy that this guy already has as yeah. a back-to-back seed ball champion. We'll have a chance to defend uh, or go for that three-peat, I should say, with Ole Miss now, uh, a different school. That'll be a big story for seed ball. But man, if he made it in the Challengers League, something that he's always been trying to do, that'd be huge for him as well. Yeah, I know it's been something that he's consistently like had his, his eyes on, right? And... For a while, he wasn't even able to play in the qualifiers, in Tier 3, because of the different yeah. rules and regulations around having he has uh, to play players with on student pieces there. So yeah, now yeah. the rules have changed. He's able to play with Ole Miss, and so far, so good. And, and it's such an interesting play style and, and team to watch in general because of the way they play around this player. And he really is the main character of this team. Like I, He jokes about being the protagonist. He is 100% right. This team is about him. And at the moment, both junglers are pathing towards this bot side. So focus will be on bot early. No surprise with the Renekton. Progress matchup in the top side. You can leave this matchup on its own. Uh, and Renekton will kind of win over time, but Gragas hangs in there. So uh, we'll see what kind of work Icelandic can get down, get done down here. I will say that uh, uh, the jungler for Winthrop, the artist formerly known as Trickster, uh, on the Xin Zhao, is looking to take the red buff. And we'll see if he gets in the bot side early or tries to pressure this Wukong. But he's a little bit behind on this clear. Icelandic will be able to finish it off before he gets there, but we'll see. It's going to be kind of a close call. Yeah, blue buff does go down. Icelandic is spotted on award, which is why he's able to get into the pit and, and have the knowledge of an invade actually happening. 
We'll see if the Gromp actually becomes a threat. There he goes. Icelandic has to get away. The Zinzal looking for some sort of damage. But now the Winter's Bite goes on top of him. And all of a sudden, Ole Miss are going to be able to go back forward. Oh, Icelandic no. gets the flash away. The Smite is secured. But it is first blood for Chookies and Winthup are on the board. Now in a 3v2. They're looking under the tier 1 turret. Shogo has a Leaf Temple proc. Gets one kill back onto the Nautilus. But Mobility still is able to finish the job. Two for one in favor of the Eagles. It was so close to finding the Winner's Bite on the Zin Zhao, but really just able to get out of range barely, and the turn comes in. Nautilus is a little bit stronger early as we see a replay. You see, Wakao's going to wait. He does find the uh, Wind Becomes Lightning, gets in here. Icelandic actually was able to steal this buff. It was almost enough with the level up to get him to survive. But that's the Winner's Bite. This auto for Shogo, just not enough range to get to the Zin Zhao. And he goes back in once that passive expires to keep on doing damage. Really like how Winthrop played this one out. Yes, it's a kill over to Shogo, but you'd much rather take the kills onto Mobility and get this Zin Zhao rolling and the Jinx rolling at the same time. Saw Mobility in this matchup against Shogo have a very solid Game 3 specifically where he really just put Ole Miss into the dirt. and Showing that it's not just a one-sided matchup. Mobility absolutely yeah. can match up against this player. Two of the best ADCs in CeeLo. Well, They're gone. looking for another play here as Chookies will go forward. And now coming down as well. Shogo just going to try to find a kill onto Mobility, but he's gone a little bit too far forward. Double buff transfer secured as the Jinx will now collect him. And I got to say, Icelandic showing top there. If your bot lane is sumless and trying to base as a jungler, you have to be very careful about where you show. Oh, but Shogo, yeah, he's able to shop now because he was sent back to base, but with that double boss, wasn't able to get the wave in. Love that turn and that call coming in from Winthrop. As, yes, they get Renekton's flash out in the top side, but you get more kills going over to Jinx on the bot side and this first dragon. This is a great early game for Winthrop, who, keep in mind, have that Aurelian Soul scaling still sitting in the mid lane. And that's just the icing on top of the cake to this early game success that Winthrop has. They'll collect the first dragon. And Sword, another dragon, has a bit of a CS lead over Uncle Sam as well. So he is certainly going to be a big player in this one. Sword, a player that, you know, sometimes gets overlooked with all the strong side laners on this team. But he has looked really good this split. And it, it's been a big jump since the last time we saw him play mid lane over on TSM. I, honestly, I was so impressed with Sword stepping into Winthrop just right off the bat. Like when we knew Sword at his best, he was kind of this roaming uh, or assassin player. Like yeah. Sword always had a good a way to read the map. But I, I know from speaking with Artemis at the Harrisburg event that I was lucky enough to cast earlier in the year, he was really praising Sword for how much time effort he was putting in and how much better he felt like he was on this team. As Sword, I, I love the fact you bring that up. Uh, he has been very improved, but at the moment we have to bring up topside. Is they're going to try and get Gragas' flash here, but a nice sidestep oh. from Stray prevents... Uh, the Zin Zhao from jumping in, and, and now he's going to actually be able to get some decent info and chase Sin off, who at this point is a little bit behind the Wukong. So that is nice for Ole Miss. Wukong, very strong with items. Oh, despite the pressure that Stray was you know, implementing a little bit, it still is Winthrop going over to the first on Grubs. The response the on the other side will be a potential top, bot dive. Icelandic going to dash forward onto Chookies, and they have enough damage to take him down early. The last tower oh. shot will make it a one-for-one -one trade as Icelandic does fall. But now Shogo and Rhino can try to make it another as Shogo's mobility is up. very low on HP. Yeah. No ghost available, so instead, you're just going to back away and let this wave die under tower. Props to Uncle Sam. Uh, he's actually hovering bot side. He will get some stacks farmed off him by sword, but uh, that is what continues to force mobility off of not just that wave, but the next one too, as Mobility is going to cancel his base now that Uncle Sam is spotted back mid, so we'll be able to get access to it. But a good play from Ole Miss, as again, I talked about how uh, Winthrop and Wakao was able to get in bot after they spotted the Icelandic on the top side, but uh, when you saw Zin Zhao spotted top, Ole Miss was able to answer with that timer from Icelandic. Here comes the Zin Zhao again. Back into the enemy red buff. Icelandic has to dash away. The three talent strike does connect though, and this, is, this might be a 1v1 kill. Looking to go a little bit further again. Audacious charge back. But well, there comes oh, Uncle no! Sam. Just in the nick of time here to save his jungler. Oh, there's a window where you can flash to get over the wall. It was missed there by Wakao as he goes down to the wayside. That's a really big play for Ole Miss. It's not only do they get a kill on the Azir, but that really gets Icelandic very far ahead in this game. Uh, as it... Would have been a red buff take. You got to assume after that kill going over to Zin Zhao, that play gets turned completely on its head. And at least now this jungler for Ole Miss, again, I think it's very important. We just have to premise everything with how well will we be able to impact the bot lane. It's going to help Ole Miss try and impact bot and continue to <laughs> yeah. feed Shogo. 
Well, now he has his ulti. I think another bot dive might be imminent. I'm not going to lie, Cubby. Flash might be up for mobility. So it would make things a little bit difficult. But a, a much better start to this game for Icelandic than the last time we saw him in another high-stakes elimination match. It was the grand finals of the first qualifier, of the second qualifier, I should say. And Icelandic, I think, has admitted he, he kind of uh, was under a lot of pressure. It was the first time he was in a finals environment. Did not look that great against CCG, but so far, so good in another game that could be the end of the split for Ole Miss. As to what I game, been some nice back and forths coming out from each of our teams. At the moment, though, looking at the junglers, each of them are working their way towards bots. No one's surprised, and Zhao is a little bit ahead of the curve. Uh, as he will try and get down there. And uh, importantly, uh, this Varus, I, I will say at this point of the game, does have the ability to uh, get a small CS lead against the Jinx. Varus so strong in lane. Uh, and we have seen that pretty much off of that last roam from Azir, there is a small lead for Shogo. So uh, th these two kills, I I'd say somewhat answered. Uh, as you're going to see, mobility still up in gold. But each of our marksmen, it was the big focus as we spawned into the game. And each team has really worked hard to make sure their bot lane set up for success. Plans. Here comes Chookies. Yeah, they landed the death charge onto Shogo. Here comes Xin Zhao as well. Rhino has to flash away, and now the re-engage can come through for Icelandic. Oh no. Shogo with the piercing arrow picking up one. Well, Kyle's gonna go down as well. Icelandic makes it two for nothing for the Ole Miss team. I don't think I saw the choppers get chained onto the Braum, and Braum with Unbreakable is able to sustain through so much damage with that mitigation that he gets. They were able to turn that with the Wukong coming in as... I, I, we're going to get a replay. I really want to look out to see the Chompers. Yeah, the Chompers end up being late. There's no root that comes in the Rhino, so the chain's not there. All this is going on. Shogo was not pressured. The flash from Chookies ends up still catching the Piercing Arrow. And Shogo with a really big turn off that chain of corruptions for Ole Miss. Is, uh, now, all of a sudden, Shogo, he's got the most gold in the lead yet again. 20 CS or 15 CS is the lead. Has the Blade of the Rune King. Yeah. Looking for more now in this game, and, and Mobility was in a position to really take over 2-0 and 2, but the laning power of Shogo and Rhino and the attention that Icelandic has brought down there brought the bottom lane back into Ole Miss's favor, and that's always a good sign. I gotta say, too, this uh, it will be a shiv for Mobility. I, I like the shiv where it's gonna help with wave clear and maybe keep you off waves more. Which, if you're playing Jinx and a Wukong, Azir, Kragas, like, everything is trying to be used to attack you, but it will make it a little bit tougher to get through this Kragas as this game goes on. So, uh, th this is something where I think leaning on the scaling of the Ace Soul and Sword mid is going to become more and more important for Winthrop. And the good news for Winthrop is that their mid laner is having a very solid game being up a couple waves mid. And Sword is someone, again, these E's from early in Seoul, they start to take up full choke points as this game moves forward. Uncle Sam might be looking for a play. Sword just went the wrong way. Yeah, there oh, goes no. Winter's Bite. Uncle Sam, two man emperors divide, and Sword is down after the Falling Star goes through. It's going to be a double kill already for Icelandic, but Mobility has picked up his first reset, but he's going to reset all too late. It's a 4v2 in favor of Ole Miss. They're looking for more. Denethor popping the dominance to try and get back into this fight, but Ole Miss find another great engage, and they're headed towards the Drake. A sword W'd in, and then had the flash out, and Uncle Sam's like, thank you very much. Both uh, mobility sums are down. I'm going to flash, sack my life, and get a huge win for my team. As it feels like a couple of these mistakes from Winthrop, a little bit out of characteristic, Graves. We saw the Jinx not chain the E on the bot side. Now we're going to uh -oh. see Jinx get caught. Yeah, there's a Cyclone mobility, able to flash. But the second proc of that ultimate is going to come through. Icelandic's on a rampage. And now has to no deal with answer. Chookies here underneath the tower. Thunder Sky going to heal OTP. him up a lot. Already has that Conqueror fully proc. Teleport will be coming in from Denethor to force the Monkey King away. Now with the, they want to fight with Denethor utilizing that Summoner spell. But Shogo has arrived Ooh, as well. Charge. The Blade of the Ruin King doing a lot of damage. And Denethor now has to use that Summoner spell to escape. Shogo, Shogo will try to flash to follow. And now he might be a bit vulnerable. Oh, no. There comes the shutdown. The Zinz picks it up and now Icelandic and Rhino have to run into 2v2. Three Talent Strike comes out. Icelandic coming Hunter's forward guide. to try to find the kill onto Chookies. One more crushing blow oh. is not enough as the Rocket picks up a shutdown for mobility. All right, time for Ole Miss to overplay their hand on the bot side. As Shogo, that flash was errant. He flashed there. He got nothing and now Winthrop able to turn things around. Even funnel another kill onto mobility. Get some free time in the bot side and uh, these two Seaball teams very familiar with each other, Grapes. They're kind of going to war here early. Take another look here. I think the play is to, to just get out here for Ole Miss, but they think that they can fight with Shogo and they end up punished, getting punished for it. It's a really nice flash from Denethor, uh, and the, the flash from Shogo just being errant. 
because he gets too greedy. I think they could have maybe gotten out there if they do play front to back with Braum Graves, but that's not the case. And once the Varus falls, it's really hard to proc the winner's bite, not to mention the Varus has all the damage behind the CC that Braum can bring. Yeah. Shuki is being saved by mobility from the mid lane. It's a nice cherry on top for Winthrop as they kind of rebalance the map. It still was a lead for Ole Miss, and I'm still concerned about the Azir scaling, but... These are timers for Ole Miss, especially with all the flashes being down, where you can really look to push the pace with Gragas, Wukong, Azir. And I want to see Ole Miss continue to stay aggressive while these summoner spells are missing. Well, Harold's up in 10 seconds. You see Ole Miss hovering around the top side of the map. I would imagine that they want to fight around this neutral objective. Uncle Sam going to get caught out by Chucky. Dredge line does come on top of him, but an Emperor's Divide will knock him away for now. Sword's still untouched on the backside, but Shogo has a good angle to dish out a ton of damage. Falling Star knocks down three, but Shogo already picking up the first kill oh. onto the enemy jungler. Stray coming forward. It's a double kill for Shogo, and the Bomba finds Chucky's a triple kill for the Ole Miss 80 carry, and they win yet another fight in the mid lane. I, I gotta say, this A-Soul, it was a great cancel on the W from the winner's bite, and it, it just feels like Winthrop again. I don't think they can fight. Uh, they need to wait, kind of scale. Them taking all these early fights, really opening up these windows where, again, down flashes. Ole Miss can push the pace with these big ultimates. They're the ones going over the wall. Uh, they're opting into a fight where you're down numbers. Sword can't really get involved, and you're gonna see this winner's bite catches them. His escape gets canceled in midair from the lethal tempo Varus. He gets taken down to a great Bomba from Stray. Gets a bonus one for Chookies. And this map, I, I thought this was a timer where Ole Miss had to push the pace. For me, Winthrop kind of giving that timer over to Ole Miss, who capitalized on it and continued to get more and more fed, especially on this bot side. Yeah, look at Shogo. 6-2-4. and four. That's what the man yeah. does. Doesn't matter what champion he's on. Doesn't matter what the early game looks like. If you get him at just the slightest angle... He's going to have an opportunity to win games for your team. And Ole Miss, they're very well aware of that. They're now up 2,500 gold. And they're in a good position to set up for this next dragon that's spawning in about 90 seconds. He did just feed Red Buff over to Jinx. Jinx is still very fed in this game, but uh, given the Shiv first, and, uh, you know, usually we see, like, Kraken, IE, and the LDR trying to get through tanks. I think some of the power of Jinx is going to be very much delayed here. And Shogo being ahead of the curve and having, uh, I'd say, a pretty powerful two-item spike with this Rage Blade. Gonna make things really tricky uh, for Winthrop as they kind of have to survive this power window. And again, wait for this Ace Hole to get in the game. That really is the solution they're looking at at this point. It is a good solution. I, I, I know I always, I'm always an Ace Hole yeah. creature here, especially in the qualifiers throughout the yeah, split. because it was so big. And games just don't end that quickly a lot of the time. And so Sword's going to have the opportunity to get those stacks, get those executes eventually. And that is where Winthrop are really going to have a good time fighting because you have two really big carries with the Aurelian Soul and the Jinx, their magic and physical damage. The problem is they just, it's going to take a while to get there. And that gives Ole Miss a ton of time to push that advantage forward. Isol, I, I mean, he's thinking about getting in here. I love the, this position that Uncle Sam's holding. If Isol were to walk up at all, it would be easy for Uncle Sam to flip sword into the rest of his team as he's really holding that gap for the dragon. And I think this is intelligent from Winthrop. They're going to drop this dragon and try and play for something else elsewhere as Xin Zhao Jinx have all made their way up to the top side. I believe Jinx did walk over a ward, though, from Ole Miss Stray. So this Dragus. Should be relatively safe, and it will just be a trade. As they try and get some more gold on mobility in the top side, and Dragon will Ooh. be taken by Ole Miss. The Stray actually uses the TP. Or actually, no, it's Uncle Sam using the teleport. I thought Stray was going to try to escape. Instead, oh, they did more resources vote. there to cancel that play, make sure that there is no attempt at that outer turret. So Winthrop actually get nothing with the Dragon going over to Ole Miss. That's pretty nice. I, I think the solution here would be for Winthrop and Sora to actually sprint bot and try and make that play, but Stray's is going to be able to walk there and beat him. We'll send Denethor bot. We'll have Ace Hole to match the Azir, which those are the side the matchups that you do want. But uh, I do like that TP quite a bit from Uncle Sam. Is that denied any trade? Uh, you're kind of calling the bluff of Winthrop, saying we know you're not gonna uh, uh, go for this at all. He's gonna have Wukong sit up here and farm it, and we're gonna defend everywhere else in the map. Worked out really well for him. Again, this is our uh, tier three tonight most improved player, your Uncle Sam, because I know yeah. you're watching him in, in some of these uh, lands back in the fall. He's taken big steps since then, and even that, just like a, a small decision that can really just continue to snowball this lead, is, is just another thing that we've seen from Uncle Sam as he's gone throughout this spring season that I've really been impressed by. Could be another kill on the sword as well as he pops the ultimate. 
And Sword's going to be able to flash on out. Safety. A flash for flash trade, though, is still always worth if you're playing the Azir side of things. As that does get Aesol out of the lane. And yeah, I mean, I remember Uncle Sam back when he was the Amumu one trick. Like way back in Season 2, Season 3. He's been playing this game forever. I do have to pause because Rhino gets jumped on. And the Zap as well. Rhino going to get TP'd on it as well. He's, He's... going to use the stand beside oh. me over to Iceland. Nick it out. But in comes the Zinzao as well. Blast Cone going to buy some trouble. space. Here comes Uncle Sam. Winthrop might have overextended with Shogo on the back line looking for a flank. Another teleport comes out. Denethor and Winthrop really an need this turret. fight. Kyle's going to dash forward. The wind becomes lightning, lands only onto one. Dredge line goes wide, and now Winthrop are on the retreat. Watch oh, Stray. He has a big angle. If the explosive cast finds the target, he's just going to body slam over and keep his team alive for now. Dredge line connects. They're going for the fight once more, and Winthrop picks up the first kill. Now Mobility's excited. He's going oh, forward, mobility. but he gets locked down by Stray. They finally take down Uncle Sam, but it's at the cost of a double kill. Over to show goes Varus, and Ole Miss still in control. It was a double kill for Ace, so I thought Ole Miss was in a pretty tricky scenario there. Actually managed to retreat to an Azir turret. Winthrop still really wanted to push, given that they sank so many resources in. And because the Rift Herald is in the pockets of Ole Miss, they're going to win out on the post play. Take the inner turret, get even more gold on the Shogo. Yes, the Ace did pick up two kills, but yeah, it ended up being well worth it for Ole Miss. Four and a half thousand gold for the Land Sharks right now in this game number one. Very impressive stuff. Remember, the last time we saw these teams play, it was Winthrop routing yeah. Ole Miss, and this time it's no, not going to be the case. I thought this was a good scenario for Winthrop. I, they're chasing. It's 2v4 at the moment. Mobility does kind of get forced off by uh, the Varus, as he's at least delayed in joining. Sword's just kind of keeping everything nice and controlled, though. Ole Miss were just able to retreat. The hook goes wide. I don't think Icelandic was really the target you wanted to grab anyway. And the re-engage from Trickies, I think, is okay. It went on to Rhino, who was down Flash, is the lowest level in the game, but uh, Denethor just couldn't continue to push. Couldn't get Mobility at the second reset. Mobility pushed really hard yeah. for it. Does end up going over to Swords, so I, I think the trade of gold and kills ends up being okay, but that was a tough scenario for Ole Miss. And they managed that really well, retreating to the top side as a team. I, I really want to praise how they played that. I think that, that was really well managed by the team. Being able to just group up as five in that situation and know that they have an opportunity to re-engage as well. After yeah. a situation where it, it really looked like, you know, Rhino was just caught out 1v5. I know. I saw a lot of situations where Rhino got caught out 1v5 in the qualifiers. That was not one of them. Ole Miss now in the lead. Oh, they no. head towards the Baron. No and Denethor is the only one nearby. This is spotted. They, they have a ward. Winthrop have a ward. But then it can't get here in time. Here comes the TP. Mobility's out. This Baron's gone. Stray coming Ooh. in as well. Baron getting secured. The rocket not able to get the close. steal as Icelandic finishes it off with the smite. Now can they escape? Stray gonna get hooked up here by Chookies. Doesn't have an escape plan right now. The death charge only falls onto Rhino. They're going to sacrifice the fat man and hope that that is all. But Ole Miss picking up the objective sword. Oh, looking boy. for some more as well. Falling Star lands onto just Rhino. But Ole Miss gonna be able to escape. Yeah, they should play for mid-outer. But that call, I really like that call again from Ole Miss. Sword is stuck, but he has no TP. Yes, because you're rowing so you were able to join the fight. But Baron was taken for free by Ole Miss. The Jinx Rocket was close. Good try for Mobility, but that wasn't a winning position. And now oh, Mobility's in trouble. Icelandic. Yeah, Mobility has to flash away from the, the flash, Cyclone of the Wukong. That is a big cooldown with Dragon coming up in just 40 seconds. Mobility also likely having to reset, meaning that Ole Miss are going to be first once again to Soul Point. I don't think that the Dragon was an option either way for Ole Miss, but the fact that the, the turret was denied and Icelandic got the flash for free out of mobility, that is a big cooldown they can punish now with this Baron push. They have it for two more minutes. Uncle Sam pushing down in the bottom lane. Going to get linked up with his partner in Icelandic to try and take down this inner turret down bottom. Shogo and Rhino pushing mid. Dragon about to spawn. Ole Miss with this Mountain Soul are going to be even harder to kill, especially against the Jinx comp, where you really need that first assassination to get the resets going. Aesol's got to continue to try his best to hold the line for Sword. This Dragon will be over for free. The, the big fight for this will be in five minutes, where it will be a Mountain Soul. But Ole Miss, a rather impressive game one from them. Keep in mind, the first two plays bot side went in uh, Winthrop's favor. It really took a couple for Shogo to get in this game. And the, the turn they've had since then, I, I feel like they've kind of been beating Winthrop at their old, own game. And Winthrop had a couple mis-executions that Ole Miss, for me, have really punished. Now, 
again, just some qualifiers history, as I know this is this is my favorite thing to do now here on the stream. Oh, fire um, wet. <laughs> Ole Miss played against the, the ASOL. It was Bradley's ASOL with CCG. They were in a very similar position in game number one of their first group stage match. They were up about 6,000 oh. gold. They had soul point. R I wasn't going to bring then, it up, Grapes, you know. And then, Brad and then Bradley ASOL happened. So, so things could still work for Winthrop. They have both of their carries at decent points. That's the Rylai's now for Sword. Another objective bounty picked up for mobility, so he's closer and closer to that IE. The, the team fights are going to still, you know, be a bit of nail-biting, if, especially if someone like Shogo gets caught early. I wasn't going to bring it up, but, you know, it, yeah, unfortunately, they had, I think, two or three inhibitors down, and they still happen. It happens sometimes. <laughs> Well, hey, for Ole Miss, it's, it's, this is a team that has scale. Uh, this was not the best team we had in Collegiate in fall. That was Winthrop. And they have made improvements. So, uh, you know, maybe trying to end a game against Aesol this time. Another improvement that they had the opportunity they weren't from. As Chookies might be looking for a little bit of a skirmish. That Glacial Fisher cancels the Zinzao dash as well. Here comes Rail. the explosive cask, and Shogo gets another. Now 4v5, the mid lane inner turret certainly going to go down after this wave falls. And that was a nice alley-oop to the boys there from Stray, as that cask a little bit too easy. Ole Miss, they don't have the Baron push anymore, but still have the opportunity to take some more objectives on the map. That mid-inner, for sure, going to fall. And we'll see how effective Sword can hold the line on this ASL after this turret falls. Sword looking for a little bit of damage as well. Uncle Sam going to join his team by dashing over the wall. Now Ole Miss can reset, right? Like, they, there's not yeah. much more to fight for around the map. Maybe you push top in a little bit before no, you head great. back to base, but this is a very oh. good spot for them, and they have another two minutes to make sure everyone's in the right place before they head towards that dragon to try to kill this game. I think taking the camps there are very smart as Ole Miss. They get into the entire jungle now mobility. Oh, here comes Uncle Sam. Marty finds no the shuffle on the mobility, and he's just deleted. Icelandic gets the kill, but look at the ace on the back Sword. line. Already Uncle Sam is down, but Shogo is godlike, and Shogo's running the floor with this game. It's another one here for the Varus. Well, Kyle has to flash over the wall to try and keep himself alive, but it does not matter. It's 4v1 Ole Miss as they're headed into the base. And we talked about how Shogo is the main character of this team. This comp is completely built around him. And uh, his ability to really just play around the Braum, the Gragas, everything holding the line. And then all the displacement they have to attack the Jinx, who was forced to go cleanse as well against the Varus. Really turned this game, I think, in favor of Will Miss in the long haul. There's not much to talk about in this fight. Mobility was flashless. Sword does his best, but the flash commits from Will Miss. Make sure that they shut this down. And frankly, I think that Ole Miss actually could have ended the game there. But... They're going to back off and uh, try and play for Baron Reset. I actually am really surprised they didn't push for the end. I, I really feel like Ole Miss could end the game. Either way, really great fight. Great timer after what I thought was going to be a reset for them. And Uncle Sam, again, pulling the trigger on this Azir, which has become a very strong pick for him, which it definitely wasn't at the start of the season. I believe the number was like two Azir games over the last couple of months as he was really trying to get this pick under his belt. And he's suddenly one of the best players on it here in this tournament. He's brought his team to an 8,000 gold lead and puts Winthrop a little bit on the ropes right now. They have another chance at life because Ole Miss did not go for the end. But things yeah, still I'm, looking very difficult. I'm shocked difficult. they didn't go for the end. It was only Zin up and there was 28 seconds on Jinx. That, that is a free end. Uh, I, I, I'm really surprised that Ole Miss didn't push for that. I mean, perhaps the, the, the more, you know, the less risky option is to go towards Baron and try to end again, but that, then you're, 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 you're allowing an, an angle. Yeah. Yeah, you're allowing an angle for Aesol to, to have another fight, and so that is where things could get a little bit scary. Stray dashing forward as now Icelandic finds an angle as well. Cyclone not going to find anyone on its first proc, and the Glacial Fisher comes out. That's a lot of big ultimates down, and Winthrop maybe oh no, have Chookies. an angle now, but Chookies has been caught. Shogo now legendary, and Ole Miss running it down mid in a good way. A double kill in for the Varus. He's looking for more. It's a triple for Shogo. He's kind of find the quad, but Mobility not going to give it to him. Now Ole Miss have Pryo, and they're going into the mid lane to try to end. I think this time they're going to end. The two carries are up, but there are tools to use to get him down. Uncle Sam still has Emperor's Divide, so the guy for the Shreem is Shuffle. Guys, Ascend not available for Sword. It's going to be very difficult to clear this wave of super minions as it goes under the Nexus turrets. It's 5v2. Sword going to have to try. Shreema Shuffle does miss. Rhino landing the Winter's Bite as well. But things suddenly dicey. That minion wave is evaporating. And the first Nexus Tower goes down. Chookies now has respawn. Finds the hook onto Shogo. Aww. They might have caught the Ole Miss AD carry. And he will go down with a big 1k shutdown going to the Aurelian Soul. 
There is a soul up for Ole Miss, so they can retreat to it. Winthrop's going to TP out on the map and try and contest. Zor's looking. Hungry for more kills. Icelandic has to dash away. It's another teleport in from Denethor. The jungler for the Land Sharks falls. And Winthrop will deny the soul. They're looking for another one onto Stray. He's caught out in a 1v4. And Ole Miss maybe starting to lose a little bit of momentum here. That's three kills for the Eagles. And soul point denied, or soul denied from Ole Miss too, which is significant. As, wait, what? Oh, okay. Where did? Oh, Uncle Sam's uh -oh. going for the end. Here's Uncle Sam. He's got dashing into the enemy nexus. Backs are being channeled right now. Here they comes everybody from Winthrop. They're going to try to stop him. They will be able to take him down before the game ends. They can Baron. I, I I know that they have to be careful about their base, but Winthrop could, in theory, drop wards at a couple of the entrances and try and push for Baron with Azir, not having TP and being in the death chamber for 40 seconds. All this, yo, Cubby, this game got crazy. I thought we were just going to be Ole Miss running, running it down and ending, but now Winthrop uh, have an opportunity to pick up a big didn't end. neutral objective. The Baron's going to get started up. Icelandic is going to be here by the time the objective is down, so has an opportunity for a steal. Shogo and Rhino, they can do a lot of oh, damage a and buy a lot of space in the 2v4. In comes Stray, teleporting in. Denethor looking to dash in onto Shogo. The Baron gets secured by Winthrop, but here comes Stray. Onto the back line. A big cast doesn't find mobility. He's still in touch on the back line. Sword's now in a killing spree with the skies to send, but they will grab Sword on the other side. Shogo now on touch. Lethal tempo in his inventory, but look at mobility as well. He's going in on the Jinx. He finds Shogo, and Rhino will go down as well. It's another four kills for Winthrop University. I don't know what happened to the land sharks, man, but the Throps, they're hunting and the Throps are out now as Baron's on their shoulders. They're going to have an inhibitor responding to prevent the back doors. And Ole Miss, again, I can't believe that they didn't end this game when it was the opportunity to. And now you're dealing with a late game ace hole. I know that Uncle Sam trying to back door. I, I feel like there are ways they could have ended this game without that, but him having a split death timer. It opens up a 5v4 for Winthrop, where with the Jinx comp, if you get one reset, it's massive the damage to Shogo, but he can't get in range anymore. It's a lot harder to do so against the Aesol. Yes, he gets taken down, but mobility starts to get the resets. The re-engage from Denethor is good enough. Shogo falls. That's a huge shutdown going over to mobility, and this Jinx is well and far into the game. And this is what we wanted. Ole Miss versus Winthrop, a battle of the bottom lanes. Mobility and Shogo duking it out. They were just auto-attacking each other at the end, seeing who ends up surviving. And Mobility, the one to win that duel. That's another 1k goal shutdown given over by Shogo, who has gotten really fed, but has not found the end of the game just yet. I, I've, ne I've never done this on a cast before. A after they took the inhibitor, there was 16 seconds left of Mobility. Only Wakao's up with alt. They had three creeps and a wave coming in. I can't believe... I I really think they could have went for the end. I, I it's, a, it's a tough call. But uh, either way, Ole Miss, they're in the state they're in now. Yes, they have a gold lead, but the scaling was always in favor of Winthrop. And you're dealing with this massive level 16 ASL now. As Stray spotted Winthrop, they could try and chase. Not going to commit, though, onto the Gragas. Oh, dredge line just missing as well. Yeah. Everything's sound for Winthrop. This, this map's okay. They're down both Nexus turrets, but the inhibitor's up. They can defend this with Baron. You're just leaning on the Aesol at this point. This is going to be really tough for Ole Miss to end. Varus doesn't get the range that Jinx Aesol has, especially at this point of the game. This is going to be a hard one. I'm just thinking back. That I, I might have cast a curse. They're going for another fight. Hook lands on a Rhino. Sky said not going to be issued here by Sword. That's the E. And you can see how large that radius is right now. Just going to be able to drag everybody from Ole yep. Miss into one singular area. I, I will say Soul spawning could be huge. If you get Mountain Soul, I, I still think Rowing Soul and Jinx can get through that. But onto this Varus, a Mountain Soul. He already is full build, has so many items in his inventory. A couple that uh, each Mountain Dragon is buffing up, given uh, what Jack Show and Wit's End gives you, not to mention Terminus. So again, Varus, very big in this game. Sugar does have Flash, but nearly every Summoner spell is up, minus Denethor's Flash. And Icelandic's Flash will be coming off cooldown about around when Dragon spawns, a little bit deeper into that spawn. Those are the only cooldowns missing everything else available. As Winthrop go to fix their lanes. They don't really care about the outer turrets. They failed to take in yet, though. It's, they've only secured one turret this entire game. But given how bloody this has been, the goal that some of the champions are at, 
Both carries are at big builds. It's a full build Jinx now that Ole Miss wow. have to deal with. It's going to be all about that execute onto Mobility's Jinx if they want to try and find this win. And now more than ever, it's the mid-jungle of Ole Miss that are going to have to make a play before a fight begins. It's either Icelandic going in for the Cyclone or Uncle Sam finding something. And Uncle oh, no. Sam is the one oh, getting no. caught. Mobility finds the kill. And now Winthrop are looking for more. Icelandic has to pop the second proc of the... Ultimate, now Rhino in some trouble as well. Mobility still doing a ton. Skies descend, not finding Shogo, but Rhino will fall. It is too dead for Winthrop, and they can the at base. least go towards this dragon. Yeah, there's a war there. You can see Denethor. He's just going to go back to base duty. As Winthrop, they're not even looking at the dragon. It's paused oh. in five seconds since I was here. As in guard, what? he dashes in, and Shogo will take him down in melee now range. Smite. Now Winthrop. Suddenly don't have Smite on a Soul Drake for Ole Miss. It is a 3v4. Both carries for Winthrop are up, but things suddenly get a little dicey. They haven't spotted Wukong either, so there's actually a world where Icelandic Hero can get in okay, and smite gone. this away. As, okay, now Denethor is spotted. It's melted. They survived the Mountain Soul. Still a lot of question marks in this game. Icelandic, he is spotted now. Denethor's here. Okay, Ole, uh, Wukong's gonna fall. Too much monkey business for Icelandic. Winthrop picks up another kill as uh, each jungler kind of pitched their wives away. Uh, unfortunately for uh, Winthrop, there's pitched their wife away and the cause was something greater. Securing that mountain dragon. And now we might have a brief moment of sanity in what has been an insane game so far, Grapes, on the Rift. Came down to this as well in the, in the first game. It, it's soul point. <laughs> seven to seven, seven. Seven drakes gonna be spawning. I, I love, I I love just... how unsurprised you are about this. <laughs> I'm losing my mind up here and Grapes is like, yeah, this is the first game, yeah, man. Well, this well, is what happened. Welcome to the qualifiers, man. I mean, you've been, up there, you've been <laughs> casting challengers all year this is this is this is just wednesday for me man we're, we're, we're oh. fine well i'm glad to be joining you uh, <laughs> on, on this weekday for this one grapes uh and bringing some sanity to what has been a rather crazy game azir turret does get dropped 30 seconds before the baron so mid control will go over to ole miss and winthrop they still have to be careful the, the threat of a backdoor it's not as real given that tps are down but you gotta believe now if you're ole miss this is the time where you might want to start to think about a backdoor. Because I don't know if they can win a, a straight-up fight anymore. Yeah, and also, even for a backdoor, like, Uncle Sam and Stray are not the, the champions that can be, you know, ending the game off of yeah, just, there's like, a Nash's by themselves. Now. Yeah, Nash's does help, but it, it is tough. TPs are up for Winthrop. I, I, if I'm Winthrop, I'd actually throw a, a ward back, like, around my Nexus, just so that sword can get in fast if need be. I, for me, like, that is how desperate the win con is at this point. Uh, just given that Ole Miss, I really don't believe that they can 5 each other. They're outranged by everything now uh, with the Jinx and the Ace Soul. And this front line, the ability for Denethor to hold with the Sterax, it's about on par with Gragas and good enough where this should be a positive one. Is oh. The ice, oh, the ult goes wide for my Slanic hero. That hurts. Now engage yeah. elsewhere. Uncle Sam pops on finds the hook. There comes the Skies Descend. It already Reset. locked down the Azir. Shogo's still on the back line looking for something, but Mobility is now excited. Icelandic will die. Mobility is now legendary, and they're looking for Shogo as well. It's deja vu all over again as an Ace Soul will take down Ole Miss. Stray has to flash away. Denethor looking for more, and here comes the Eagles. They're going to look to end game one. This game was so weird, honestly, Grapes. I, again, I really think that Ole Miss could have found an angle to win. It was not the case. There were a couple attempted ends from Ole Miss. But in the end, Winthrop, they're the ones that are going to take what was a back-and-forth game one where they spent the majority of the game behind thanks to Swords, Asol, and Mobility finding some big shutdowns and some big fights. Only Rhino here to defend. It's just a problem. There's 10 seconds on Icelandic. This game is done and dusted. 11-3 and 4 for mobility on the Jinx and Winthrop put themselves at match point. That honestly, I mean, it's a tragedy for Ole Miss. Like, you got to get back in and regroup as a team. Honestly, both teams. Because Winthrop, like, you got to be feeling so fortunate that you won that game. Meanwhile, Ole Miss, they're going to have to lean on some of the experience they have from the members. Be like, hey, that game was a tragedy that happened. We have to reset and find two more wins here against our collegiate rivals in order to move forward in this bracket as, of course, this is an elimination best of three. And it feels to me like Winthrop were kind of giving a gift. Yeah, uh, it was, you know, that's the power of the Ace Soul. You're able to pull these defeats out and, and turn them into victories. You know, Sword able to save that game alongside Mobility, who played amazing throughout yeah. the entirety of that one. Shogo ending the game in a loss, 17-6. and six. So, yeah.
bit of a shame for him, but he had a, a good performance. Ole Miss looking to bounce back. Try to send us to a game six. It's just the, the year night. of the dragon, man. That, that's all it is, you know. <laughs> we had Smolder, and then Smolder got nerfed to Oblivion, and now everyone's figuring out that A Soul is what it is now. It's just the year of the dragon. Well, maybe Uncle Sam can pick it up here, as it is fearless, so Actually? no more dragons for Winthrop. We're going to head to a break. We'll be right back for the draft for game two. They said it couldn't be done. They said the world would never accept a cookie this long. Or a churro, and probably not a pretzel either. They also said under no circumstances should those really long and delicious treats be wildly affordable. To which we said, but we already made them. And they are. Introducing the incredible new footlong sidekicks. Get one at Subway today. I think TLC will win. We'll have no issues at all. Probably FlyQuest. I hold a lot of respect for like a lot of their players, so probably the favorite to win. Can I say myself? Yeah, I think um, FlyQuest is the favorite to win the split. Area of effect gaming. I think they're individually just so cracked that it doesn't matter who they're up against. Well, that will be my team because it's my team. I mean, uh, who roots against themselves, you know? Us or FlyQuest, because I think we're the best two teams. I'd say it's probably FlyQuest, I mean, or ourselves. I mean, I can't ever count myself out. Yumi? Yumi? I don't know. I mean, honestly, I'll just say Yumi. That champ just, like, is useless, and then whenever the champ is useful, like, the game kind of sucks, you know? The community will have my back on that one. So yeah, just Yumi. Well, this is embarrassing. I think it's Zoe. She's just the mid lane champ that wins jungle matchups, and I also don't even really win on my team, so I just hate Zoe. Zed. I hate Zed. They just farm with Q from far, and then they think they're good when they press R. I think like if you're a Zed OTP and you can play Zed and you like have like the basic combos down, it shoots you up like a whole tier at least. I think I'll choose Zeri, kind of like the peak of Zeri Yumi meta, and, like Zeri Lulu meta was kind of the bait of every top player. I want to dunk on Shochi. Yes. He's a good friend of mine and he's a good laner and I want to dunk on him. All of them. All of them, but uh, in particular, every support player that exists, hands down. Just pick one. Quad. So badly. So, so badly, actually. This guy has 87 LCK games. He just dropped two nukes in his most recent game. So if I can drop a nuke on that guy, then it's going to look good for me. Messages unlit. Give him a little reality check. I'll just choose Dragoon. I mean, we're the two, like, Darius players, and I guess you all. And there's only space for one, I guess. I'll just say that. I just want to be AoE, because I think I'm friends with a lot of them, and uh, it would just feel good, yeah. 